everybody, I'm Tabitha and today it's time to talk statistics. This channel, as you probably already know if this isn't your first time watching one of my videos, is kind of at a weird niche between booktube and authortube. So I talk about both. I talk about writing, I talk about reading, and basically just talk about books in general, including creating them. So for this video, I'm going to take a look at my fourth quarter statistics. So from October, November, and December of 2020, just sort of how the year finished out as far as my writing and all things related to writing goes, and as far as my reading and all things related to reading goes. So so really, if you are a writer who reads or if you just love hearing authors talk about their books and other people's books, you have found the perfect channel and I hope you subscribe before we're done. Anyway, this video. So this video, I'm going to start with my writing statistics and then jump to my reading ones. If you're here for one or the other, there are helpful timestamps in the description that'll let you jump to where those start. But as always, I suggest you watch the whole thing because really, that's the point, right? So let's start off with my writing statistics and talk about how those things went for these three months. So when it comes to writing statistics, the first one I like to talk about is how many words did I write this quarter? So I do um, year long goals. You probably knew that if you've been around this channel before, but I do track how many words I wrote every day, every month, whatever. So let's take a look at a graph that's gonna show me how I did for this quarter. So if you look at this graph, you can see that October and December look really low, but I think that's honestly just because November was insane. I did participate in National Novel Writing Month and I wrote more than 50,000 words on my nano project in November. So that makes November chaotic. It was over 60,000 words in total of all my projects. So October and December, while they weren't bad necessarily at right around 20,000 words each, um, they just look really bad compared to November. So thank you, nano, I guess. So since 2020 is completely over, I think it would also be relevant to look at my how many words did I write per quarters side by side for all four quarters. And that looks like this. So even with my rock star of a November, you can see quarter two actually inched out a little higher than quarter four. I don't even remember what I was doing in quarter two, but holy cow. I mean, this is amazing. Anyway, I'm proud of how high all of these are. Even quarter three, although it was lower than the rest, is still over like 75,000 words for that quarter. So it's really, really, really cool. It's been a productive or was a productive 2020 as far as actual words written go. But that is on all my projects combined. So the next thing I want to take a look at is which projects got the most attention. So on this particular graph that you're looking at, October is blue, November is red, and December is yellow. So you can see the bars sort of grow on each other. So that really long bar for um, the Hitman is all red. And that's because the Hitman was my nano project. So that means I didn't touch it in October and I never came back to it in December. I just wrote the whole entire thing for National Novel Writing Month. But you can see those four in the middle always get a little love and attention. So they're stacking on top of each other. That's blog posts, video scripts, book reviews, idea journal. Those always get some of my attention. Part of me almost feels guilty for counting those. They're not like a writing project that's ever going to turn into a book. But then I remember they are always where I can turn my focus to, even if I'm having serious brain fog and I can't work on a project. So the idea journal might be creative writing. It's just not assigned to anything. Book reviews are what I'm reading because I want to be inspired. Um, video scripts here is where I can talk to you guys about what I'm going through. And of course, blog posts are kind of the same thing. So I guess at the end of the day, what I'm saying is don't feel guilty about where you put your words. This is where mine went for quarter four. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think it might be kind of cool to look at the same graph so that um, project and what got my attention, but for all the quarters of 2020. So let's pull that one up. On this graph, quarter one is blue, two is red, three is yellow, four is green. So you can see the proof in exactly what I was talking about. Those four things that get love all the time, I mean, literally do every quarter. And the idea journal, I mean, can we just take a minute to appreciate the fact that my idea journal hit 100,000 words this year? Like, Whoa. So as a reminder, some of my idea journal stuff does turn out to be things that I'm going to use later. So like Ghostly YA appeared in my idea journal before it ever appeared anywhere else. And then you notice it pops into existence in quarter two, where Magical YA, for example, only appeared in quarter two and very little. And that's just because that got a revision in quarter two. And honestly, I haven't done much with it since. Um, it's interesting to see that the only project that was focused on for like only one quarter besides Magical, which got it, its work done in 2019, was the Hitman. 
my nano project I haven't touched again. I'm sure I'll see it pop up again in 2021 when it needs an edit, but yeah, kind of cool. I did write four full stories in 2020 and I think this graph sort of shows it. Um, I'm always working on something, but the words are not always on the same project. It's amazing. So honestly, as you can see, 2020 was not at all bad for my writing. I wrote more than half a million words on various different projects, despite all the chaos that went on in the world and in our own lives in 2020. I managed to draft four novels. I wrote a lot of book reviews. And basically, I just kept up the drafting machine. But there are other sides to writing, namely editing. In general, editing is something I am always working on. Between editing blog posts and projects, there is always something that either needs a shallow, a deep, or a grammatical edit. And in December, that honestly truly was my focus. So let me show you what I mean. This graph shows how quarter four looked each month as far as how many chapters I edited. But when I say chapter, I mean it might be a chapter or one blog post or one short story or one scene. So it's really just one chunk of something. You can see December pulled way ahead of everything else, 59 total chapters. I mean, that really shows you that once Nana was over, my focus was on editing. Um, I really do find it interesting to see that I logged some edits in November. If you had asked me, I would have been like, no, November was all about drafting Nano. I don't remember editing anything, but clearly I did. I'm guessing they were blog posts or something. I, I don't remember. December, I can tell you it was Fron. I'm diving back in to do the beta edits and revisions for Fron 4. Now that beta feedback is back, I'm sure January will look crazy like that too. It's just a lot. And you know what? I can't resist. Let's look at editing for the whole year. So even after me just telling you December was a huge month for edits, you can see, again, I don't know what I was doing in quarter two, but whoa. So quarter two, I logged a ridiculous number of edits. And actually thinking back, I want to say I did a full pass of Fron 4 and the Magical YA in quarter two. So that's the reason why you see such a huge uptick in the number of chapters I edited. And again, Fron 4 is what's making that comeback in quarter four because beta feedback is back. So really, all of my editing this time has been those um, like revising for finality for getting ready for publishing. So that's really cool. I'd like to think 2021 is going to be a big year for editing for me because 2020 was a big year for drafting. Four projects got done. They need to be edited. So I hope this keeps up. But honestly, this isn't bad. I edited a grand total of 363 chapters or scenes or whatever in 2020, which now that I'm saying it is a pretty shocking number. That's a lot. Writing and editing are pretty much the extent of what I track for writing projects around here. I'm proud of what I was able to accomplish in 2020. I'm hoping for equal or even better in 2021. But again, writing is only half of what I talk about on this channel. So let's take a look at my other bookish obsession, reading. So let's start with that grand total for 2020, shall we? The one I know you're thinking of. I ended 2020 by reading a total of 151 books. Whew. Now that's out of the way, let's look at what we're facing as far as statistics. First up, how did that look for pages read? Here's a cute little graph that shows you my incredibly productive fourth quarter as far as pages. You can see I'm pretty even every month. That stayed consistent all the way through 2020. I read a lot. It's usually between 3,000 and 5,000 pages every month. Um, it is just a lot. I always have a book. I'm always reading pages. It is what it is. Let's take a look at age categories. That's something I get asked all the time. Did I read more adult or young adult in the fourth quarter? So for this particular quarter, adult tops it, but just barely. I have a little, it's almost 20 books that I read were written for adults. Just about 15 of them were written for young adults. I am an adult, so I guess that makes sense. I didn't read any middle grade or children's in the fourth quarter of 2020. I don't know, it just, it is what it is. Let's take a look at genre. In fourth quarter of 2020, my genre graph looked like this. So fantasy taking a shocking leap ahead for fourth quarter of 2020. I did read a lot of mystery thrillers. I did read some science fiction, but mystery, I mean mystery, but fantasy just, oh my goodness, almost 15 of the books that I read in the fourth quarter of 2020 were fantasy. You know, I'd apologize for it, but I think I enjoyed them. Actually, now that I'm saying that, I feel like I should check. Yep, a quick check of the data shows that was actually true. I pretty much enjoyed the fantasy. So the way this graph works is the darker the color of blue, the more stars the fantasy book got. So you can see that more than a third of the fantasy books actually earned four stars. 
So pretty good. Overall, yeah, I was right. I'm not going to apologize for reading so much fantasy. I'm enjoying it. So the next thing I would say I get asked a lot is you recommend a lot of indie books. Is that because you read mostly indie? So I don't know. Let's take a look. This graph shows you that I actually read more traditionally published books in fourth quarter than I did indies. I read almost 20 traditional books, but only about 15 indies. So look, I am reading lots of traditional. So when I can tell you I re recommend indie, I wonder why that is. You know what? Let's take a look at how those indie books rated when compared with the traditional. On this graph, traditionals are blue and indies are red. You can see that traditional books and I had a rocky and problematic fourth quarter. In fact, seven of the traditional books I read earned two star ratings for being problematic. Compare that to only one indie book that had the same result. That's pretty interesting. So you can see that they're neck and neck with the three stars. So my the niche books I'm reading, I think I hear people say that a lot. Oh, but indie books are more niche. Uh, not according to this graph. They were neck and neck as far as the books that were niche. But as far as the books that I love or books that I'm going to scream about forever, I actually read more indies that fit into that, which I think kind of explains why my 2020 books I wrecked list was indie heavy. They're just better books for fourth quarter. The other thing I get asked about all the time is where do you get your books? I think it's because a lot of people who think about becoming um, book bloggers or booktubers, we think that that means all of our books are going to be free from now on. And so they, I like to be transparent about that and tell you the truth about where my books come from. So this graph I'm about to show you only applies to books I actually read in fourth quarter. I'll get more on that in a second. But here's the graph. So as you can see, uh, most of the books that I read in fourth quarter either were borrowed from the library or borrowed from a family friend. I just lumped all borrowed in together. Um, I'm going to say most of them were library. One of them I think I borrowed from a friend, one maybe my sister, but most of them were library. I get audiobooks, ebooks, and paperbacks from my library. My library is really, really amazing. Um, I did have, I do get a lot of them for free. The review request and the ARC bars, those are, they're free. They're provided to me in exchange for a free review from the author or the publisher. And then I do have some that I purchased and read in fourth quarter. Remember, if I purchased it or want a giveaway in fourth quarter, but I haven't read it yet, it wouldn't be on here. Let's take a look at 2020 overall. Um, so that graph looks like this. Remember, they build on each other, so it just keeps getting taller. And you can see that that library thing is holding strong for 2020. Over 60 of the books that I read and reviewed this year came from the library or were borrowed from somebody like a friend or whatever. But remember, if you add together that review request bar, which is real tall, and the ARC bar, which is real tall, yes, a lot of the books that I'm reviewing on this channel are provided for free. So a big thank you to the authors and the publishers who have worked with me and have reached out to me to get your stuff read and reviewed. I hope you are happy with the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, we were you know, temporarily closed for a little while when the number got insane. I'm hoping to reopen up again soon to be able to start taking your requests. Um, I never wanna make you wait as long as some of you had to wait. So you're awesome. Thanks for working with me. Keep it up. So I don't know about you, but I'm thinking this video has probably gone on long enough. So I think we should take a look at those final totals now that 2020 is over. I mean, really, it looked like this. It's some amazing progress. You can see quarter two dominated in the number of words written. That's why that green is the darkest. Um, but quarter four was right behind it. Quarter one dominated in the number of pages read. That's why the yellow is the brightest. Although quarter four was again right behind. Quarter two dominated in chapters edited. So I do not know what I was doing in quarter two, but I feel like I need to jump in a time machine and go back and ask her what she's doing because she is incredibly ridiculously productive. And I'm just going to spend the rest of my life trying to find that, that magic again, I think. It was insane. It was an outlier for sure. But you know what? The best part is all of these squares or rectangles represent me. I did all of that work in 2020 and looking back on it, I'm super proud of everything I was able to get done amidst the chaos. And maybe I can say I'm amazing myself. How about that? On that note, that is it for me and my quarter four stats. Thank you for being here. Drop a comment to let me know you're still here. Hit subscribe and tap that little bell so you know when I'm back. Keep plotting the path to your own dreams and I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.